primary ignition. Hello and welcome to a short guide for this time limited event dedicated to that Friday in November that usually promises discounts. Today, I will be covering tier 8 and above premium warships, with a focus on those previously removed from the game, and discussing their strengths and weaknesses before concluding with my thoughts on my personal choice. Alongside, I will be showcasing this replay of an arms race battle in the Jean Bart. This year's event runs for 12 days, from today onward, and unusually, all of the black ships can be bought directly in the armory. Whilst it is tempting to spend less money by picking up containers, if you are looking for a specific ship, I suggest biting the bullet and buying the one you want outright, rather than rolling the dice and landing the wrong prize. All of the drop rates for the containers have been published on the game's website, and each premium container has a 12% chance of dropping a ship with a 10-point commander. Kicking things off is the Saipan, a light American aircraft carrier based on the hull of a Baltimore-class cruiser. This has the benefit of giving it exceptional stealth and handling for a carrier, whilst its planes have high speed and can carry larger payloads. It also has its drawbacks, as the ship will be much less durable when taking fire. Her aircraft restoration time is also one of the longest, which pushes the player into attacking weaker targets that are often low. Fast but fragile, with a potentially punishing skill flaw, Saipan is only recommended for players who already have experience in CVs. Next up is one of the Japanese Navy's most powerful vessels, the infamous Kaga. Renowned for its capability to attack over and over again with large numbers of aircraft, Kaga has low concealment but relatively poor mobility. Her dive bombers drop 18 instead of AP, and her torpedo drop bombers drop 4 fish per attack run in a pattern tailored for harassing larger ships. They have a short aim time, but long arming time, giving more agile ships a better chance of dodging. It's better to save the dive bombers for targeting destroyers, as they come in at a low drop height. Her rocket planes are worse than those found on the Shokoku, and generally only useful when nothing else is available. Though initially starting with a large amount of planes, her regeneration is slow, and the planes themselves have low health. The Pan-Asian destroyer Loyang also received a fresh coat of paint this year. Essentially a Benson with extremely long-range hydroacoustic search, she is a vessel that scales well with player skill, but depends on her torpedo armament as well as her guns when fighting for cap control. There is a choice between using short-ranged but hard-hitting torpedoes, and ones that are longer-ranged but less powerful. Overall, her combination of smoke, torpedoes, hydro and stealth makes for an excellent destroyer in a competitive meta. For the first time this year, we have a tier 10 black ship on direct sale. Yoshino is a heavy cruiser project based on the Yamato class battleships. A supercruiser armed with 9 310mm guns and 16 long lance torpedoes. She has a relatively long 18 second reload but makes up for it with HE that performs better than most and a 21.3km range, which coupled with her relatively fragile armour makes her a long range HE spammer. Most suited for a kiting role. Yoshino is most dangerous against enemy cruisers, and carries enough torpedoes to hurt many an unwary opponent. However, her armour is not good enough at the closest of ranges. Is she worth the discount? Also available in the armoury for coal, this ship could be obtained entirely for free by any player with commitment. I would not recommend Yoshino, both to new players and those seeking to spend their money, as its high citadel and comparative lack of manoeuvrability can render it useless in a pinch. Everyone's favourite German premium has also received a makeover. Pommern is the B-hull of Friedrich de Grosse, equipped with 12 15-inch guns and an enhanced secondary battery. In fact, she has some of the best secondaries at tier 9, able to extend to a maximum range of 12 kilometers. Also armed with four torpedoes per side, each of which has a 6km range. Pommern becomes much more dangerous the closer the enemy comes. Unlike her tier 8 forebear turbids, she also has access to Hydro, which is of great help as her massive size and slow rudder shift time can make it difficult to dodge incoming torpedoes. Whilst her guns have high alpha strike potential, their firing angles are poor, their reload time is long, and their accuracy is traditionally German. 
Her armor scheme goes some way towards countering her vulnerabilities, but there is nothing subtle about what this ship does best. Getting into the enemy's face, tanking what they can give, and then returning it with interest. Pomern is refreshingly free of gimmicks, and what you see is what you get. The best brawling battleship at her tier. A reliable damage dealer and money maker, if you can resist the urge to charge into the cap during the first five minutes of battle. Cossack is a tribal class destroyer at tier 8, and she has much of the tier 7 hider. A scouting gunboat with many similarities to the Lightning, Cossack has two additional guns, improved engine performance, and excellent handling. However, her firing angles are poor, she only has one torpedo launcher, and her AA is relatively not there. Veteran players will find her st speed, stealth, and agility addictive. However, players who are used to more forgiving ships might not have an easy time. A short engagement range limits her carry potential, along with short-lasting smoke screens. Topping this list of advantages is her small health pool, which necessitates the use of concealment to engage and disengage from the enemy. However, her eight guns are good fire starters, and with all guns firing, she is a serious threat to any destroyer at the same tier or lower. Careful management of her health is required to ensure a victory. Massachusetts is the traditional American secondary focus battleship in World of Warships, and plays very differently to her sister Alabama. Not least among the differences are her lower sigma value and worse shell dispersion, which leads to accuracy issues at long range and encourages getting closer to the enemy. But where the difference really lies is in the secondary battery. Massachusetts can cycle her guns faster, further, and far more accurately than any other American battleship. They are terrifying to enemy destroyers and cruisers, and will often give the air to an engaged in a brawl. Additionally, she has 46% torpedo damage reduction, and a repair party that reloads in half the normal time, and her tried and tested 16 inch super heavy freedom shells will punish any target, if they can hit it. One of the hardest hitting battleships at her tier, Massachusetts is held back by short range and the odd questionable salvo. A sizeable covering of 32mm armour hinders her resistance to fires, but though she is slow and easily spotted, her fast heal, tight turning radius and well protected citadel heighten her frontline potential. Moving on to something considered to be the best cruiser in the game, Alaska is a pocket battleship in a cruiser's matchmaking slot. Boasting a deeply submerged citadel protected by spaced armour, she can hit 33 knots and has a decent rudder shift time for her size, but it is her 9 12-inch guns that ensure nobody can ignore her. Shooting high-velocity AP that benefits from enhanced penetration angles, Alaska is a cruiser killer that can also duel battleships. Her armour profile, citadel protection and extremely comfortable gunnery result an extreme offensive potential limited only by her health pool and bow armour. Whilst not idiot-proof, underestimating her salvo weight will almost surely result in pain. Though other cruisers may lure you in with flashy DPM estimates, only Alaska has the level of protection required to take the punishment she can give. It's when positioning and opportunity enter play that her potential comes into its own, though her hull will give the novice plenty of chances to learn. Where her vulnerabilities lie are the problems she faces when damage over time effects are applied. This is where her battleship's disguise falls apart. Though a monstrous cruiser, she does not have the health to keep taking damage. But, as a cruiser, she is near unrivaled. Finally, we arrive at my pick of the bunch. The Jean Bart is an up-tiered Richelieu class battleship that benefits from a 26 second stock reload, enhanced AA firepower, and the ace up her sleeve, the coveted main battery reload booster. With this consumable activated, building for reload and under a little pressure from adrenaline rush, this battleship can deliver three salvos in 20 seconds. Four times every battle, using the reload booster halves the time taken to reload the guns, and the effects are devastating. Jean Bart can stack fires for days, or outright remove any enemy that dares to show broadside when you're ready. This is a ship that rewards bold plays and good timing, and scales exponentially with player skill. She is limited by her skin of 32mm plate and a comparatively small health pool, 
along with the slight problem that her AP cannot overmatch more than 25mm of bow armour. But this only requires the knowledge of when to switch shell type. Her engine boost is most useful during turns and chasing the enemy, as this is not a ship that excels at kiting. Sideways, her belt and turtleback armour is strong and will deny Citadel hits at all, but the closest of ranges. But with an all forward main battery, getting all her guns to bear requires bow tanking is also an excellent option, except when facing ships that have 460mm guns or larger. This ship is a jack of all trades, combining punchy guns, agility, trollish armour and the ability to press the delete button when faced with your enemy's broadside. That concludes my top picks for Black Friday 2021. Thank you for watching, and until the next time, goodbye.